Welcome back folks. Okay, so today we're going to be sorting out the leaky brakes on this truck. Uh, previously, I had rebuilt the uh, brake relay valve uh, in the back thinking that that was my problem. Uh, that's, uh, let's see, this guy right here. You can see, so I tore that apart. It's pretty simple to rebuild. And uh, I was hoping that that would solve the issue. And it didn't. And so anyway, basically the problem that I've been having is that uh, whenever uh, running the truck, uh, if you hold down the brake in a constant position, it tends to bleed off a lot of uh, air. And even, even if you're not letting off the brake, uh, just holding the brakes down, it bleeds off air. And so I was under the impression that the brake relay valve was just blowing off excess air, or maybe it had some crud stuck in it or something. And it turned out that wasn't the case. And reading up on uh, Steel Soldiers and other places, it looks like actually the tractor protection valve is more likely the culprit. Now, I'm not sure if I can show that here from underneath, but we'll flip the uh, bed up in a second and I'll show you the tractor protection valve. Oh yeah, there you go. Okay, so it's this guy right, right up here. There's actually some diaphragms up top, and uh, I'll show you why I think that's it in just a second. Um, but I'll I'll uh, I'll give an example of what it's doing right now. Hey, can you hit the brakes? Okay, so there you go. So the brakes are being held, and it's leaking like crazy. So I'll I'll go ahead and flip the bed up, and I'll show you uh, that happening. On a side note, another issue I'm having that I'll have to leave for another day is either the tailgate valve is leaking and bypassing or the tailgate cylinder uh, internal piston seal is bad. And so you can hear that leak down every time I shut it down. It's not real bad, but um, it's something that needs to be resolved. All right, well, this being a dump truck, uh, we'll be uh, working underneath the bed and there's these safety props here. I'm going to flip these up. These are set up just so that uh, if something were to catastrophically fail, it doesn't come down and crush me. So, flip these guys up here. That should do the trick. Okay, so you can see the uh, brake relay valve on the bottom there. That's this guy here. Uh, rebuilt that last week. And so now this is the guy that actually I think was giving me the problem um, I'm going to have my helper hit the brakes real quick. Uh, go ahead and hit the brakes. Okay, so uh, this bleed off right here uh, is dumping air while just holding, and it shouldn't be doing that. So um, in searching around online, uh, I found there's actually some diaphragms underneath these guys here. Uh, that'll blow out and uh, uh, so I've got a rebuild kit here for it. We'll pull that off and uh, put them in there and see if that solves the problem.
All right, so here's the tractor protection valve that we're working with. And this is the rebuild kit that we'll be using. That's a Halidex, uh, what is that, RN31BC. Um, these are pretty cheap. I think I paid maybe 30 or 40 bucks for it. Um, one thing that I want to note uh, before we move into this is that when I was pulling all the hoses off, it looks like that these little nipples here are actually a separate piece from each of the fittings. And they can actually come out with a hose. And so you want to be a little bit careful that you don't drop them and, and forget to put them back in uh, when you reassemble it because it probably won't seal without those. Okay, well, obviously that's not supposed to be like that. So it's good to always find uh, something wrong when you are trying to diagnose a problem. Okay, and yet again, here's another broken uh, diaphragm. So this is good. This is definitely the problem that we were having. Not sure how that comes out. Looks like maybe a pop rivet there. All right, what do we have? Well, I recognize those three. And then these are the covers for the diaphragms. Okay, so I figured out where these other parts go. So if you flip up this diaphragm here, or cover more like, uh, there's actually there's actually a uh, clip ring in there you can see there and so that allows us to pull this assembly out and there's a spring behind that uh, that's this guy here there we go Got to keep your thumb on there so that it'll uh, not fly off when you release it. 
So here's this guy. Pop these out of the way. And we got our spring. It's interesting they give a replacement spring, I guess, if it gets rusty enough. Uh, then you'd want to replace it. This one looks fine, but I'll put the new one in anyway. That's interesting. The new one's a little bit smaller in diameter. I don't know if that matters. Well, it's way stiffer, too. Hmm. Ah, interesting. I just discovered that this actually slides. This guy here. I think I want to scrape that out. Ah, okay, so there's more to this than I realized. Interesting, this didn't come with any silicon grease. Hmm. Well, it looks clean enough. I think I'm going to probably just reuse what's in there. I guess we'll begin by swapping out these O-rings. There's a few extra parts in there that I'm not entirely certain what they uh, what they go to. Either a different version of this valve or um, possibly another assembly in the uh, in the truck. I'm not sure. So we'll take a little bit of that grease and throw it on the O-ring here, the new one. actually look like slightly different size. Hmm. okay swap out my gloves And I'm not really entirely certain what to make of the difference in these two springs. And so I'm actually thinking about... Oh, I see. The uh, They are the same diameter, it's just the old one's compressed a little bit. So I'll put the new one in. I'll wipe that off a little bit before I put it in.
Ah, it's a tricky son of a gun. I think I got it. Let's see. Okay, yeah, I think we're okay. All right. Okay, well, that's it. Uh, so I guess I'm going to put it back into the truck. That should solve the problem. Uh, there was definitely uh, an issue with these two diaphragms being damaged. The rest of it looked fine. Now, I'm not really sure what this O-ring here 
uh, well, these three O rings, that little plastic or rubber plug and this star washer or four. Um, there is another assembly on the opposite side of the frame rail opposite of the brake relay valve uh, that looks kind of like this, although quite a bit simpler. And it has a cap on top that looks like might actually correspond with this. So I'm going to guess that this is for that assembly. I'm going to take and throw those uh, O-rings in the back in the Halodex box and I'll save those for later in case I encounter uh, an issue with that other uh, part. Um, although I'm pretty sure that the uh, diaphragms are entirely what my problem was. Okay, so that should be it. All right, well, let's see if that did the trick. Uh, go ahead and hit the brakes. Oh, I do hear some leaking back there. Let's see what that's from. All right, so I sprayed everything down with uh, soapy water and found some of the hoses could be tightened a little bit more. There's still tiny, tiny little leaks around some of the hoses and that plug there on top of the uh, plastic... Uh, cover on the valve uh, seems to leak a tiny bit, but it's very, very little, like nothing like before. Uh, why don't you go ahead and hit the brakes? So you can barely hear anything and I get a little tiny bit of bubbling out of that. But uh, other than that, it's, it's really good. And so I think that's gonna be more than adequate. That definitely solved the problem. It was leaking like crazy before. So I guess that's it. Forgot to put the safety props down. Okay.
All right, well, I'm really happy to see that that uh, finally solved my uh, brake leakage problem. The screamer would come on, you know, anytime I'm on the brakes for any extended period of time coming down a hill. And, uh, you know, that gets kind of annoying. Um, for anybody else out there that's trying to solve the same problem, hopefully this is useful. Uh, next project on this truck is going to be probably the uh, the tailgate uh, release valve uh, or cylinder leaking, whatever that is, it uh, bypasses continually. Uh, small amount, not enough to cause any problems, but it's something that needs to be resolved. And then the other thing that I want to do is I've got this um, uh, battery tray here. When I bought the truck and it showed up on the, uh, the flatbed uh, delivery truck, I had to drive it uh, up the mountain to get to, uh, where I'm at cause the truck couldn't reach here. And so I had to quickly rig up the batteries and the original batteries were dead. And so anyway, anybody with these, uh, LMTVs knows these, uh, original battery boxes use kind of a weird battery format. And so, um, uh, rather than trying to track some of those down, I ran down to the auto parts store and, and bought these. Of course, they don't fit in the uh, battery tray, uh, you know, which is meant for the four square batteries. So I like the battery boxes covered, um, but I want to use regular batteries. So I need to make some kind of adapter here and then get those mounted down. It hasn't been a problem up to this point. You can see it's all jerry rigged. There's pieces of, there's pieces of, um, what is that, like carpet and some duct tape. That's literally from when I, I drove it up from the, uh, big rig that delivered it. I haven't changed it since. And these have been sitting exactly how I was rigged up then. Um, anyway, that video will be coming up probably in the next couple of weeks here. And, uh, you know, outside of that, this has been a really good truck. So hopefully these tires hold up. I just did a video on uh, swapping out one of the ones that had gone flat on me. I've got three left to do. I don't really want to do them right now, but I've got a bunch of work to do that's going to put these to the test. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, that should be a wrap for today. Once again, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching.